Hi, hello, welcome back. My name is Devraj and I wanted to talk today a bit about breath work and particularly Reikian breath work and why I've, I've been getting really into it recently and I have quite a long history of being involved in breath work, about 20 years, and I wanted to put out some of the reasons why I think this, this Reikian technique is, 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 is really advanced, basically, and actually, in my opinion, quite a lot better than the existing uh, type styles of breath work that you'll find all around the alternative communities. And I'm not doing that just to be completely kind of uh, antagonistic to other other breathwork styles and stuff like that, but also just to just to just to bring knowledge out, you know, just to bring knowledge out. Because I think I was first involved with uh, I think the first time I went to breathwork class was like about 1998, 1999, and I was doing rebirthing, classical rebirthing, with a German guy in Kings Cross, London, and then I was doing holotropic breathwork with some guys up in the north in Hebden Bridge. And then when I started to do therapist training at around 2000, 2001, uh, I was regularly doing rebirthing sessions there during my, during my training. And then around 2005, 2006, I started leading rebirthing groups. And what I'm familiar with is, so I'm familiar with rebirthing, I'm familiar with holotropic breath work. I'm also familiar with several schools of shamanic breath. And well, let's just go through those very briefly and I'll explain why I think Reiki and breath work is a lot deeper, more systematic and better, basically. One of the things with rebirthing was, I mean, this originally came from a chap called Leonard Orr who kind of brought it out again in the 60s in the US. And essentially all you're doing, he used to do it in his bath, but you're just doing it lying down and you start to breathe consciously, uh, quite deeply, sometimes through the mouth, sometimes through the nose, sometimes breathing in through the mouth, uh, and out through the nose, and you 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 don't have a gap between the in breath and the out breath, and so you're doing this breathing, and it starts to create a charge of energy in the body, and and that charge at some point starts to provoke some kind of reaction, which may be, you know, tremoring, spasms, kind of uh, contractions in the body, this kind of thing, and you know it can give a very very powerful. Uh, experience it usually lasts a session usually lasts an hour to two hours hour and a half something like this I was regularly leading one-to-ones and also a lot of groups you know where we'd have 20 30 people and and uh, you know get them into this breathing cycle and when you're working with a with a therapist with rebirthing you know an, an interesting thing that you can do is the therapist you, you know you can ask if you're the client then you can ask for some pressure because often when we do this deep breathing, we go into a kind of strange inner space, which is kind of womb-like. And, you know, having pressure on you, it, it's, it's a little bit, I don't know, you just kind of want it and it allows something to be released. And so this is an interesting adjunct to rebirthing that you can do with a friend or someone like this. My main issue with rebirthing is that although it can provide a huge breakthrough experience for people, and there are people who will swear by rebirthing, you know, and think it's the most amazing thing ever because of a massive experience of release that they had one time, is that you're kind of at the behest of your unconscious and what it wants to bring up as to what you release. You know, you can't really direct it that much. You could, before you start with a rebirthing session, you know, formulate some ideas of what you want to let go of or what you want to move towards in this session. But apart from that, it's not very systematic in its approach. And so sometimes you might get a huge release and other times not so much. And it's, it's kind of difficult to really, to, to pick up all the nooks and crannies of your personalities, of your personality and where you're unconscious with rebirthing. So that's rebirthing, it's a great technique, but it has its limitations. Holotropic breath work is quite similar, using, again, using a continuous breathing technique, usually for a longer period of time, and with quite a few therapists in the room when I did it. And, and what you're doing here, it was originally developed, sorry, it was originally developed by Stan Groff, Stanislav Groff, who I think was a Czech national who came to the US, and he'd been working with LSD, with the, the drug, the tryptamine, and in therapy, and then when LSD got illegalized around 1970, he came over to the US, I think, and um, he started to do holotropic breath work. He was looking for a non-drug treatment that could create a similar effect. And the session goes on for a long time, like I say, three to five hours. And the, the, the therapist will come around and put cushions on you and, and, and squeeze you down a bit if you, you know, you, you ask for it. And then, and then you push against that, you push against that, and pushing against it, uh, allows a release. So it's very similar to rebirthing, but it's a bit more, it's a little bit more organized. It goes on longer uh, and, and there's a bit more therapeutic intervention in the average session. 
But again, you're still at the behest of kind of of, of uh, your own unconscious mind as to what it's going to release, how much of a charge, and whether it's really specific to any area of your body or any area of your psyche. Now then we can move on to like shamanic breathwork techniques, and there's a lot of these. Some of them uh, involve a specific form of breathing, like the breath of fire, which where we kind of take two strong inhales through the nose and an exhale through the mouth. It goes a bit like, ah, ah. And this can be done standing, and after about five minutes, if you continue that technique, you know, you, you, you will enter, start to enter a sort of altered state, your body will start to tingle, and then you use dance, and you move your body around and allow spontaneous movement, and, uh, you know, in a room full of people, maybe a darkened room for an hour, this can be a very powerful process. And in addition to this, you can also use it for some form of visualization, you know, either as an adjunct to this dancing or body movement process or uh, on its own, you know, and, you, and you're guided by someone to, to visualize uh, power animals or, or descending into the earth is quite popular as a metaphor for the unconscious and this kind of thing. I've had very powerful experiences doing this in the past and it is a powerful technique, but again, what I'm left with is, it, is it's lacking when I compare it to something as systemic, as in, sorry, something as systemic, uh, as kind of systematic rather, as Reiki and breath work. So, you know, with all three of these techniques for which I'm quite familiar, there, there's some high level of limitation. And when I became a therapist, I only would use breath work as an adjunct because I recognized it was very useful to put a session of breath work into a weekend of maybe body-based therapy because it could allow stuff which wasn't moving to move, often towards the end of a session, end of a weekend or three or four day process. But the main bulk of the process for me would be emotional expression, which I do a little bit less of in work these days. And the main part of the session would be, would be bioenergetics, bioenergetics. And what I, what I like about these two processes that you, and these two techniques is that you have a lot more conscious control, both as a workshop leader or as a participant on how you're driving yourself. You know, so you can you can pick you can use bioenergetic exercises specifically to work with, say, your oral side, specifically to become allow more vulnerability, to uh, allow more anger and the sense of boundaries. You can do this with emotional expression too. You can drive it in certain directions, so you can be quite systematic about how you're working on your own psyche or on the group if you're the group leader. And rebirthing, for me, and these breathwork techniques were more something you could put on the side that could allow a kind of left field, spontaneous release from the body of something that was being held. But in the last year or so, I've really been getting into Reiki and breathwork, and not an easy thing to do because there aren't many teachers around. Uh, the main book is probably Jack Willis's Reich Home Book, which I've been covering quite a bit of, uh, chapter five, uh, which is one of the, the main chapter really, uh, for the first half of the book anyway. Uh, in, in some YouTube sessions. I've done about 11, 12 YouTube sessions on that. And I've also been adapting some of the techniques from Reiki and segmental armoring in as well, and some other techniques I know. And now I'm kind of confident that we've got a system with Reiki and breath work that can be taught and that you can follow along with that can produce very high levels of change and, and is very powerful, deep kind of rocket fuel for the psyche because once you've learned belly breathing and, and, and really got it, you know, once you've really got horizontal breathing using the intercostals from the chest as well, you start to create more energy in your belly and more freedom in your pelvis. And from this, this is the kind of mammalian part of our psyche as opposed to a very kind of human thinking part up here. Then you can start to use that energy to drive out blocks in the upper body, which is where, where most of the blocks manifest, you know, from the crown, forehead, eyes, uh, mid-face, mouth, jaw, throat, chest, diaphragm, there are blocks all the way down, these lateral segments of blocks. And once you've got this belly breathing going, you know, then you can start to use that energy to start to break these blocks. And how you do that is by specific exercises whilst you're doing the breathing. Either sitting, standing, or mostly lying down in a Reiki position with your knees up. And so what this offers is a, is a breathwork technique, you know, where you get this, this charge in the body, you get this energy, but then you use that in a kind of workmanlike, uh, a working fashion to start to remove blocks. And that, of course, creates more energy. It creates more charge, healthy charge, that you can use to take more blocks out. And so you can create a positive feedback loop. And this is a very powerful process. And 
and you know I'm just totally uh, totally into it at the moment I'm doing it every morning along with my bioenergetic practice and I'm kind of integrating bits of it into bioenergetics and I really recommend you check it out and of course you know there's a little bit of promo in here you know these, these are you know I want to make it clear that this this is my my genuine learning and understanding but also I am just creating a Reiki and Breathwork course a 26 module online course which if you're intrigued by this video or you're intrigued by Reich's work in general with the breath then do check that out I'll leave a link at the bottom but it's a powerful powerful course and I'm creating content for it and I'm like whoa this stuff is like rocket fuel you know because it's really it's it's really got it you know, it's really got it. We can develop charge in the body and then we can use that charge to clear blocks and that creates more charge and we can clear more blocks. It really has immense potential. So if you're intrigued by this, do check out the link underneath for my new Reiki and Breathwork online course. And thank you for watching. I'll speak to you soon.